All right, uh, welcome everybody to our fourth workshop of the day today um, of the National Association of Peer Supporters Conference. Uh, my name is Amy Detmer. I am an NAPS board member and I am volunteering to kind of help on the back end of uh, this particular breakout session today. Um, we are so glad that you all are here. Um, I do use she and her pronouns. I wanted to mention that. And for those of you that uh, may be joining via phone and can't see visually, um, also giving a visual description, I am a uh, white woman with long blonde hair uh, in my early 30s. And I have a silver uh, hummingbird necklace and a, a gray cover top on. Um, and that's the description that I'll share with you today. Um, I do want to mention that we have uh, closed captions enabled during today's event. Um, and uh, what we would like to offer you the opportunity to do is to please click on that closed captioning box as you see uh, at the bottom of this slide, if you'd like to turn those closed captioning on uh, during this session. We also request that during the presentation, attendees utilize the chat box to do networking, comment on the session, and interact. Uh, please utilize the Q&A box uh, feature to ask any questions that you have. We want to make sure that we'll have the ability to see all of the questions asked. So we ask you that you use the Q&A box rather than the chat box. Um, so I'll be behind the scenes. If you have any technical questions, I'll do my best to answer that while uh, we hear from our exciting presenters today, Jay, Rachel, and Jessica, who are going to talk about creating, sustaining, and, and expanding peer support in the community, a method for building social connection. Before I pass it off to Jay, Rachel, and Jessica, I also want to give a giant thank you to all of our supporters um, and our sponsors for this particular conference. Thank you um, with a special thank you to Marigold Health for being our main sponsor of this event. Um, and one last thing before I pass it off to today's presenters is Happy Global Peer Support Celebration Day, everybody. Um, I hope you're doing a lot of celebrating and we will continue the celebration with Jay, Rachel, and Jessica. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, pre um, brief presentation. And we are very excited to bring, it, uh, bring this to you. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and make sure everyone uh, can see this. Let's see here. All right. So can people see that? Okay, I'm getting some. All right. Well. So what I'll do is, uh, you know, I want to, uh, I guess I'll introduce myself and, and also I, my co-presenters. My name's uh, Jay Gorman. I'm a, I'm a researcher and clinician at the VA Bedford Healthcare System um, uh, up in Massachusetts. And I do research in, uh, in uh, peer support uh, and community reintegration. And I'll, I'll let my, my colleagues also introduce themselves. I'm Jessica Mack. I'm also here at VA Bedford in Massachusetts. I am a peer specialist and I've been working in peer support for approximately five years. I've been certified for a year and a half. And I'm Rachel Kolixt. Um, I also work at Bedford VA in Massachusetts. Uh, my background is in psychology. Um, I am currently serving as the program manager for our peer services team. And I also serve as the local recovery coordinator for Bedford, mm -hmm. uh, promoting recovery oriented interventions and community integration for veterans. Uh, wonderful, great. So, so what I'll do, you know, today what we're gonna be talking a little bit about is, um, uh, a method and a way to create and sustain and expand peer support, right, in the, in the community, uh, uh, what, what, sort of why we're here. And and today, what I'll really, you know, what we'll want to do is uh, this presentation is going to describe a lot about um, a peer-led community-based intervention that encourages social connection, reduces barriers to access to health services. 
really builds communities, a community's capacity to serve a specific group of individuals. And so we'll, um, we're part of the team for, for veteran outreach into the community to expand social support. We, uh, the acronym is VOICES, um, which does focus on, on veteran social connection. But, but we're going to be talking about broader concepts that we think will be adaptable to sort of different um, groups and settings, uh, including virtual settings, uh, and, and we think can apply to other individuals. Uh, and during this presentation, we'd really like to convey ways, you know, to uh, identify ways to improve social connectedness in your community, uh, explain impacts that social isolation, inadequate social support and loneliness may have on overall health, and, and really just like learn about benefits of sort of community-based social gatherings and, and really how to start one. Um, where maybe you live, maybe you work, uh, or with other organizations. So let me, let me start here. Is you know we say voices. If you if you look at this model here, um, this voices, this veteran outreach into the community to expand social support, or we, we kind of call them voices events, and and they're really designed to be open uh, and bring people together in the community. Now. The first event we start with uh, to build a community is, is veterans coffee socials. So essentially having people together uh, around where they live or work, and we don't ask much, right, of potential attendees. It's simply that they show up, this low barrier to entry. From there, it can turn into other events. You know, as you see this sort of like coffee, <laughs> Uh, you see us pouring coffee into a coffee mug. You know, we, we start uh, we, we start with something simple and we believe getting people together will, will turn into something um, that leads to sort of positive um, relationships in the community. So this is peer run. It involves typically weekly 90 minute gatherings in the community. It's not for treatment of any specific diagnosis. It's, it's uh, accepting of family, friends, and significant others. Um, uh, and, and initially, peer specialists in, in our um, system, VA system, they establish a weekly coffee social, often with a partner in the community, right? It's community-based, so we'll partner with some other usually veteran in the community, um, but non-veterans can be our partners and allies too. Uh, and over time, after this is built and uh, we have sort of um, regular attendees, uh, sort of the peer specialists will leverage those leadership skills of some of the attendees who gradually take ownership of the social, which enables our peer specialists to really begin community building activities in other towns. And we start with just casual conversation, sharing helpful resources, um, but these later change, right? They adapt, it's on attendee preferences. They can become volunteer groups, bowling leagues, other recreational events. The coffee socials is just how we found success in initial um, operation of this. Um, and so they can organize spinoff events, meetups, barbecues, lunches. Um, it enables these attendees to further expand their networks, not just veteran friends, but others in their community. Um, and so they're designed to sort of cultivate this mutually supportive communities and be sustainable and with hopes of maintaining this high quality of interaction. Um, and, uh, you know, essentially research shows that peer support models enhance personal growth. And, you know, if you're on this, you probably know that. <laughs> um, but, you know, when people facing common concerns and barriers come together to provide each other with guidance and support. Uh, and so when we believe that this sort of social experience creates a space for that to happen. And, um, but if people, you know, just out of curiosity, we'll, we'll keep going, but out of curiosity, if anyone has, like these weekly or regularly occurring events that they do in the community that sounds somewhat similar. I'd love to hear, hear it in the chat, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on to my other presenter too. Great. So just to share a little bit of background uh, as far as why we wanted to target these coffee socials and, and other venues for engaging veterans in the community. One of the things that we started to recognize um, through a whole body of literature and research on the impacts of loneliness and isolation, what we've learned and what we've seen 
even you know with the folks that we've worked with is that this can cause significant impacts on healthcare and just general general qual quality of life and well-being for veterans so we really wanted to make sure that we had an a venue where we could engage people and try to target this issue of social isolation. Of all the research that we've kind of looked through and talked about, one finding that really stands out to me um, relates to the impact on mortality. So loneliness can have the same impact as if someone were to smoke about 15 cigarettes a day. That to me was startling. And so just knowing that, um, you know, there's a whole cascade effect that can come along with this social isolation for mental health and physical health. This is something that we knew that we wanted to target. And in thinking about what would be the best response for this, we knew that social support could be that response. Um, we think social support plays a huge role in getting people connected to resources that might benefit their healthcare and their physical health and their quality of life, and hopefully have a long-term impact on suicide prevention. When people aren't getting these needs met, we know that that can increase their risk for suicide. Um, and so that's certainly another reason why we wanted to target this. The other thing that we thought a lot about is, you know, we wanted this to be a community activity. Um, as Jay mentioned, this is not necessarily intended to be treatment that we're offering in the community, but rather more of a social space for individuals to connect with each other. Um, so these social gatherings come in many different forms, um, and, and really the ultimate goal is to bring veterans and their supporters together in the community. Um, so as Jay said, Primarily today we'll be talking about these coffee socials, but um, the Voices Project is looking at various ways to engage people in community activities even beyond that. Um, as far as the coffee socials, again, the goal really has been to enha enhance connection to social support and increase access to resources for um, that's in the community, and that is where our peer specialists play an important role. Um, the benefit of the, their lived experience and their engagement in their own recovery is that they can go out to these coffee socials and host these coffee socials, um, but also kind of serve as a bridge to getting connected to VA services if that's something that a veteran is looking for. Um, so it's another way to, to get those healthcare needs met as well. The Veterans Coffee Socials are pretty unique. Each social kind of has a life, takes on a life of its own and has its own unique personality. Um, what we highly encourage our peer specialists to do and folks who end up hosting coffee socials is to try to tailor it to the needs and preferences of the people who will be attending the coffee socials. So getting feedback about what people want, what's working well, and what they would like to be different can be really helpful. Um, the ultimate goal is to have this self-sustaining space where people can gather in the community. It's mutually supportive and open to everyone. You know, So veterans, their family members, um, and all the supporters who want to connect with them. Next slide. So taking a step back, when we talk about social connection, we thought it might be helpful to help give a little bit more understanding of what these principles actually are. And so the framework that we've used is actually the civic model. Uh, we've taken this from Lori Hairdo. Um, this is a model that really spoke to us because it includes these five pillars that we think lend well to these coffee socials. But this, I think, this counts for any social gathering that um, you could think of for these community events. So things that we wanted to take into consideration um, using the civic model. Um, first, closeness. 
Do people feel like they have strong ties to other people, um, especially people in their own communities of choice? Um, identity and common bond. Do people feel like they have a space where they fit in, um, where they feel like they can connect to other people? Valued relationships. Um, are there relationships that people have that they value and um, again, feel connected to? Involvement. Are people actually socially engaged with others? Are there people out there that they can reach out to and call on um, if needed? Um, do they feel connected to larger, have a sense of a larger purpose and a community connection? And feeling cared for and accepted. Are there people that are in their lives that they think really do actually care about them and um, have that sense of meaningful connection? So these are the five pillars that we strive for when we're thinking about creating new coffee socials and new spaces for people to gather in the community. Right, next slide. And to give you a better sense of what this might look like, we thought this uh, video might best capture what we're trying to achieve with these social gatherings. Um, so Jay is going to play that and hopefully the audio will also come through. Um, hmm. Ooh, try this um, ten. Connecting with others plays an important role in overall health just like getting enough sleep and drinking plenty of water. Over time, not getting the social support you need can make physical and mental health difficulties worse. One of the best ways to connect with people is through common experiences. That might mean bonding over a hobby, a profession, a faith, or another mutual interest. For some veterans, it's hard to find people who share and understand their experiences. They might not like to talk about their military service. Some just don't think others can relate to them. By getting veterans and their supporters together regularly, whether for a chat over coffee, a bowling night, or a volunteer activity, you can build social connections and improve attendees' overall well-being. For more information, including tips for starting a veteran's coffee social, download the Quick Start Guide. Developed with input from veterans, the guide helps community leaders and others set up social groups to prevent unhealthy social isolation among veterans, no matter where they are. The Quick Start Guide answers questions such as, how do I find local veterans? When and where should I schedule get-togethers? What should I do to prepare for a social event? To start a veteran's coffee social, you don't have to be a veteran. You just have to be flexible and open and have a desire to give back to your community. If you're interested in supporting and connecting with veterans, download the Quick Start Guide from our website and set up a veteran's coffee social in your area. Excellent. So that hopefully provides a nice overview of what we've tried to achieve with these veterans coffee socials. Um, just a couple of quick notes about the video. Certainly it peer supports, peer specialists are a natural partner for this. Um, as the video mentioned, some people don't necessarily want to launch into their military experience. And some people feel like they especially connect around that. And our peer specialists just have such a good way of being flexible and navigating that and um, using their own experiences to connect to veterans at these venues. Um, and then the other part, uh, the, the quick start guide, we'll share a little bit more about that later on. That was kind of a teaser. You'll have to stick around to hear more about that. All right, uh, thank you. Um, and you can hear me okay. I, uh, I I dealt with technology. All right. <laughs> great, great. Okay, I'm hearing laughs. Perfect. Um, even if they're forced, I appreciate that. Uh, so let me just, you know, one of the things that we really wanted to look at is, is what is this doing, right? We're getting people together in the community. And um, we want to look at are people developing 
connections. And so what we did was we, you know, we wanted to make sure, you know, is this enough, right? Can we just open it up by having this really low barrier? All you have to do is show up and, and are there people there that are positive and, um, and, uh, you know, forming friendships. And so we, we reached out to uh, about eight of the socials we had in the community and, um, we, uh, there were about 70 veterans ages, you know, ranged from 26 to 93. Um, and what we did was, uh, we, we looked at, are they socializing outside of the socials, right? Are people meeting there weekly and then forming these at least bonds enough to at least meet out, meet up once a month outside of the socials. That was sort of our minimum. Are you meeting once a month with someone uh, with someone that you see at the social um, outside, right? So we're this idea of like forming some type of support system or network, and and most are. So 75% of the people that we surveyed, of the the sort of 70 people, 67 people that we surveyed, are meeting up with people at the social um, outside of that weekly event. And we so we sort of also wanted to know, did do they meet people there, or or is this someone they already knew, right? And so of of the people that do of the people that meet people outside of these socials most met these individuals for the first time at an event at a voices event um, these were all coffee socials so they meet someone uh, at the social and then they spend at least uh you know one time once a month outside the social um, having some type of social contact with them and so for us you know it really spoke to us thinking hey um, you know, this is this is something where people are developing. Uh, they may be building these friendships or support systems. These are people that they don't just engage with, but people they've actually added to their social network. Um, so, so most are meeting with someone they first met at one of these events. And then, you know, our, our belief really is that, you know, we want to prioritize social support. Our, our belief is that communities drive this effort um, and that our sort of these voices events are for our intended population. And, you know, and that can be all sorts of individuals. But for us, it's veterans um, and veteran families and support of others, regardless of their affiliation, regardless of any affiliation, VA affiliation, otherwise, just support of others in the community. You know, we um, we don't write notes in the medical record. This is simply to bring people together. Um, and but what we have found is that at these socials that some people were getting connected to VA care. So we were reaching people who weren't connected at all to VA care, um, right? 41% had no prior um, VA care at all. And after attending, something here changed. We, we don't really, we don't know what, right? It could be people felt more comfortable talking to others they connect with, peer specialists were there, part of, you know, their VA peer specialists and they trust them and they're hosting the attendees and they feel more comfortable accessing services. We're not really, we, we don't know that. But what we do know is that sometime after the socials, um, one in four veterans who were not connected to VA care became connected. And so, and I imagine if we had looked at community resources in general, it would have been higher, right? Not just VA sources, because not everyone's eligible. Um, but, but if you know, for, so for in the in this survey, right? For example, you know, this was not intentional to enroll veterans in care. We just found that when veterans start becoming more connected after they are interacting with others at a social. Um, you know, we, we even found sort of in a single year that one peer specialist who attended a lot, we had a lot going on in the community, met weekly, you know, ended up connecting almost 40 veterans to care uh, for unmet health needs. And so we see this as not necessarily a goal, but sort of um, a side effect, right? When people uh, feel comfortable talking to others, uh, there's less stigma around services and may feel, may be, feel more comfortable accessing that. Oh yeah, I'm seeing some great comments here. Um, yeah, community-based socials, right? Kind of conversations and motivation, desire and passion of the peer specialists. Absolutely, it's peer-led, uh, peer-led. Um, 
for sure. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so once again, um, so I'll go ahead, I'll move on here. All right. And so, you know, just kind of following up on that, I think that's part of the core values that we strive for with these coffee socials. Um, that social support is so crucial. The fact that these have sustained, I think it's partly due to people feeling connected and having that sense of community at these social gatherings. Um, and so I think that's one thing to emphasize is that, you know, we've used this as a model for um, veterans in our community, but I think just social support in general, this would be a great model of community care. Um, I think one thing that's so great about these coffees is that people are, because they're forming these relationships, they're kind of looking out for each other. And so when people quote unquote go dark, which is something that we hear often in the, the veteran community, they're looking out for each other. They're calling each other up and asking how they're doing. They're encouraging them to get support for whatever it is that they're dealing with. Um, and so that, that's where we're saying it's a mutual supportive system. Um, again, this is an opportunity to reduce that stigma. So by leaning on each other and talking about personal experiences and what's worked for veterans and you know what hasn't worked and encouraging each other to get that care, um, I think it, it normalizes the experience that attendees have. Um, and I think that just builds that sense of connection. And part of that is promoting access to healthcare, um, information about services, information about community resources. Um, the other thing that's so great is that our peer specialists actually walk people through that process. It can be really confusing and overwhelming. And to have someone who you've met in this setting who you've started to get to know and feel comfortable with, go through that process with you, I think can be um, an extra layer of support. So these are certainly um, values that we bring into these coffee socials. So from what you're looking at right now is a chart that shows from 2014 to 2019, there was substantial growth of coffee socials from 2014 through 2019. And these are the coffees that were started and sustained. The X through the coffee cup represents coffees that were closed in that year. Um, also, please note that 2020, all of the coffee socials were shut down until the spring of 2021. And the closed coffees were replaced with a virtual coffee. Uh, the virtual coffee ran for 14 months and we had a total of 234 coffee socials over that 14 month period. The average attendance was about five, uh, five individuals with a total attendance of 1,226. It wasn't necessarily the same five individuals every day. It was a rotating, rotating amount depending on the day of the week. Um, now in 2020, uh, the year's not ended yet. So we're not, it's not in that area. So we currently have six weekly socials that have relaunched and our average attendance right now is 14 per week in the different coffee socials. Uh, we also have four monthly socials that have uh, relaunched since 2021. Um, please note that monthly socials uh, often require more for sustainment. The weekly coffees often just, it's just coffee, uh, maybe a snack. Right now we're not really, there's not much food or coffee really around, but the monthly socials require more sustainment, like full meals, special guest speakers. And uh, this year over the summer, they've been having a lot of memorials and remembrance ceremonies for those that have died in the past 19 months. And that's what's sustaining the monthly coffees right now. Slide, Jay. The Coffee Social Goals is to create a gathering to reduce social isolation in individuals. It, it creates an organic gathering of folks 
Uh, most of them are veterans or veteran families, uh, veteran supporters, veteran friends. Uh, the successful groups do not have ulterior motives. Uh, they don't have specific cross sections of gender, age, branch of service, era of service. Um, and we don't allow solicitation, selling items, um, other than awareness activities, uh, maybe a fundraiser, fundraiser awareness is for veteran nonprofits or local areas that are going around um, or other, other events. Um, we build a caring environment um, we, bear, we build a caring environment. Uh, no one at the coffee knows um, when I bring when I bring a fellow vet, when I bring a veteran or someone that I'm working with, they the individuals at the coffee don't know that I'm working with that person in a peer support role. I introduce them naturally, and we and this creates an environment of a little pressure, uh, finding unity in the veteran being in the veteran community and finding hope and possibly assistance and an overall goal. Okay, so some of you are probably at this point wondering, how do I get involved? How do I start something up like this? You know, where can I get more information about how to do this? Um, and so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that now. Um, in thinking about designing a coffee social, um, we're, we've started to put together some guidance for how to go about doing this. Um, there are a lot of different considerations. Um, Jay's gonna talk a little bit more specifically, but I'm gonna share some of the, the broad ideas um, and considerations. Um, so the first being think about identifying potential community allies. This works best because we develop networks in the community. And so potential allies might include veteran organizations or veteran friendly agencies, veteran service officers, um, definitely agencies in the community that can help support this. And these are people who might help with actually starting it, promoting it, and attending it. So these allies are really crucial. Um, we also want to set ourselves up for success. And so location is so important for that. We want people to be able to actually access the coffee socials in a reliable way. Um, and so ideal locations might be areas that veterans either reside or they frequent. Um, this might include things like lodges or um, soldiers' homes, VFWs. Um, these are places that we know veterans might tend to frequent. Um, you also want to be thoughtful about time. So time and also space. We want to make sure that we can provide accommodations, you know, for people who have limited mobility. Uh, the time is really important to think about as far as what are the times that are going to be most likely to have that peak attendance. Um, these are the things that can help sustain that attendance over time. One thing that might play into that is the characteristics of the people who you might be aiming to attend these coffee socials. So, for example, um, we've had socials that have a lot of retirees. So thinking about times of the day that they might be out and about. Um, there might be folks who have working hours or families, and you might want to accommodate that as well, um, whether that be evening or weekend socials. Um, so time and location are certainly important factors. Um, and then the next thing being ease of, or sorry, promoting the coffee social. Um, so, that's something that, you know, we've developed a lot of different ideas and strategies around that. The goal is to get the word out as much as possible. So again, through these veteran organizations and allies, word of mouth, um, and making sure that you have a select number of folks who can commit to coming at least even for the first few coffee socials. That's what's going to start to build up the attendance. Um, and think about different methods, whether that's through 
um, paper materials like flyers or digital materials. Maybe there's an electronic brochure or flyer, um, posters, getting the word out in a variety of different methods. Um, hosts that do work within the VA, uh, what we have found to be successful is sharing that information with VA colleagues. So um, our peer specialists do a great job of getting the word out about our coffee socials. Um, we have a monthly newsletter that goes out that lists all of the socials in the community. And um, we have colleagues who partner with us to encourage veterans that we might work with to attend them so they can develop social support in the community. Um, so these are great strategies for getting the word out. Social media is big these days. Um, that seems to be a, a popular method of getting the word out. Um, not everyone has access to social media though. So we always wanna be thoughtful of uh, making sure that these materials are accessible for everyone. Great, thank you. Yeah, and you know, and and so you know, obviously we're coming from sort of a, a veteran VA context, and and when you're thinking about starting a social in other contexts, right? There are um, other organizations offer NGOs and nonprofits um, that may, may be in the local town, maybe that also support um, uh, causes that that you may be working with, or organizations you may be working for, and so when when we think about this implementation. Um, you know, we want it to be located and open to the public. So it's not private. You know, what we really mean is we don't want it to be exclusionary of others, right? We want to support community integration goals. And that means mm -hmm. being open to the community. Um, the other thing is we think, you know, often what we've experienced sometimes is, you know, people get really close to these and we want that. Um, and, and sometimes what we want it to stay open so that other people can also attend and develop their own social ties and people can get comfortable. But uh, but I think keeping it open not just allows for other community members to develop, you know, their own social support systems, um, but it also kind of in some ways incentivizes or influence people to do their own meetups outside of the social right so um we're, it's open here in the social uh it stays open but hey a few of us are going to get together why don't we why don't we go get together at another event um so it increases the contacts that people may have in a week or in a month it can strengthen their own ties um and they can plan their own meetups right so designated times um and, and that's how you continually create and foster that social support system is by um you know repetitive, positive uh, experiences, interactions. The other thing that would we'll say is, um, this may not apply to a lot of organizations, but for our, as it does, right? Uh, if, if someone is in a, um, uh, the medical field, uh, you may have pressure to count it as some type of medical encounter, um, but um, we try to resist that. Uh, we want it to be casual. We want to minimize the barriers to entry. That means anyone can join, not just those seeking care, not just those in our system, not just those in our organization. And so um, we conceptualize them, right? We consider them as regularly occurring outreach events, regularly occurring community outreach events. And so, um, you know, but for others, this type of organizational pressure might not be there. The other thing we say is we want it at least once per month. Um, we obviously, you know, I just talked a little bit about how sort of that weekly people, when you see someone weekly, uh, you are, have more chances to establish rapport and people are more likely to come back for that, that uh, positive experience. Um, and monthly is a little harder. It's like you have to kind of remind people um, uh, regularly. So it's, it's a little tougher to sustain, but still possible. The other thing is to keep in mind, look, the primary objective is to social foster interaction. And when you get a group of uh, individuals together, you know, there may be people who want to give presentations or, you know, want to talk about access, you know, talk about various services. And we just want to make sure that the, the attendees that are there are comfortable with what we're presenting. Do they want to hear the information? Right. We don't want to force any information. Uh, we don't want to present information people aren't interested in, we want to focus on the social interaction um, and this positive experience of being together. If we can, if 
individuals are interested in hearing those presentations, we will absolutely provide them. But that is our first priority, because if you don't, uh, then then some of that sort of social connection and interaction, when you're replacing it with presentations, it can be lost. And so we obviously, uh, we do have presentations, but only when attendees want them. Um, it's also, it's driven by attendees. And so we may start as coffee socials because it's, it seems to be uh, the least threatening and easiest, easiest for us to get together to start with, but you know, it, they may be adapted to, to, other, um, to other types of social gatherings, whether it's uh, bowling leagues or gaming nights or, or how, however, um, but we, we, wanna, we want it driven by the people that are attending. We want it to be community driven um, because they're eventually gonna take it over. Um, so it, it's theirs. Uh, we just want to provide support. I'll say also the host encourages attendees to socialize outside. And what we what we mean by that, uh, we're not nudging people. <laughs> what we mean is um, we uh, come with resources uh, that talk about local events outside of the social. And um, you know, we want those types, that type of information that we may put on the table or speak about, we want that information to, um, you know, turn into an idea of getting together outside of the event. Um, but we're not, um, so uh, we just want to provide the opportunity for people to engage in social activities outside of the social. And that we just come prepared with materials. So once again, we're not forcing information, but we have them. If people ask about, you know, if, if people ask about VA needs or VA services or have concerns, we have information there and we can connect them if they want. Uh, so, um, you know, it's all about sort of coming, is establishing a rapport, emphasizing and prioritizing social connection, but having this information and connection available when people want them. Uh, the traits of a good host. Um you know, a quick summary is willingness to engage, knowledgeable, observant, flexible, personable, consistent. Um, it's really about creating a environment of welcoming. Um, a lot of the art of networking, uh, the use of self uh, to be open to, uh, to use your own story, you know, like, hey, you know, as peer, peer specialists, you know, we use ourselves to promote others in their own journeys, but also too is, um, you know, be willing to be open of what's happening around them and to listen to feedback and the, the back and forth between the host and the gathering of the coffee socials. Um, there's a lot of you know, working, you know, kind of working the crowd, uh, walking around to different tables and engaging in different conversation, um, serving as the bridge between, you know, attendees and available community resources. Um, I myself have a binder of information for the specific area that I'm in that coffee social is being run in so I can flip through it. And as I am, as I am doing this service, I'm also teaching those around me to kind of be able to pull resources out from their own way of organizing their, their, their resource binder, as I were, I don't, you know, everybody has their own style. Um, but also, like Jay said, encouraging social connection outside of uh, socials, uh, providing, you know, mostly we, we try to aim for free or low cost, uh, keeping in mind people's financial uh, background. We don't try to ask too many questions um, or try to make people feel bad about what their income is. Um, and we provide resources for paid events if there is stuff. Or, you know, we had a fair here recently. It's a, that started back up this year in 2021 that had you know, four free days for military veterans and their families. So we really encouraged that information and really uh, fostered that stuff. And then the coffee social participants took it upon themselves to gather vans together and bring each other to this free event and it, it helped. Um, also, uh, the use of self, uh, 
I, I'm a consumer as well as a employee at this hospital and other VA services. So I use myself as a story, like uh, I use myself as a story as pulling other participants like, oh, I understand how frustrating it is to get a CT scan right now. You know, let's walk through the steps together. Let's let's talk about this. Um, finding the phone number. Uh, for coffee socials that we're no longer hosting that have moved on to the community, they do have our contact information. So these individuals are able to pick up the phone and call, you know, a peer, peer specialist directly. And we're able to find that information for the host or the participant that's asking those questions quickly. So people can engage in healthcare. Um, we also at this, at this, during this coffee social, we're also mentoring uh, individuals to possibly take over this coffee social. Uh, we generally run the coffee social for about six months ish. And then uh, we foster a relationship and encourage folks to host can take over the hosting responsibilities. We still check in uh, once every few weeks to months and we call into the, the hosts frequently to check on them. Uh, slide. Um, for efforts for moving forward, um, it is for us for supporting veterans in the com community by emphasizing social support with others who may may have similar experiences. Um, for other organizations, it may be for others in creating a low pressure community. Uh, for socials, for individuals that you're trying to reach. It helps them connect and not, them not just to services, but to each other. Uh, as the theme throughout this presentation that Jay have, and Rachel has been talking about is we're not, the ultimate goal is not for services, but to connect with each other, to reduce social isol isolation, but also reduce stigma with getting treatment if that's what the individual needs. Uh, we assist with fostering relationships and we often provide warm handoffs. Um, I have sat in on veterans entering treatment for the first time, maybe the first meeting with a, a therapist for the first time that they made an appointment with and have canceled five times. Uh, they might share that information with me and kind of help them foster into their own, into their own goals, into their own goals of assistance. Um, we have the uh, VHA bed, bed coffee socials at va.gov email uh, for our contact, but also there's an email, uh, the mentalhealth.va.gov slash socials for the information that you heard today. Is there any questions? And then I will... Um, so I've been monitoring the uh, kind of the comments Jay and Rachel, do you want me to share some of them? Uh, sure, if people uh, or if people have questions, uh, we're happy to answer that. Whatever, whatever you think. Well, I guess while questions are coming in, I'm just going to jump in if that's okay and say Great. thank you for. Uh, what a tremendous presentation. And I personally, you know, really loved hearing how you took this out of like the context of like a normal service uh, space and into the community and into spaces where um, people want to gather and we want to be a part of. So um, I think it was just tremendous in hearing the data of how um, effective this was. And um, one of you shared something about uh, you know, loneliness and how, you know, the effect of loneliness can be so similar to smoking so many cigarettes. And I think you said like that really stood out to you. And um, I resonated with that. I was like, oh my goodness, time to stop feeling lonely. Um, but that was beautiful. Thank you for a uh, tremendous presentation as uh, some of these questions come in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, this is uh, especially, I mean, coming, you know, uh, we, you know, really starting this before and, and the pandemic and now with the pandemic, isolation and loneliness is just um, is just so present, omnipresent, really everywhere. And, and this idea of how we maintain and keep social connections just uh, seems to be even even more important than, than it was before. And, and 
now with all this sort of increased difficulty doing it. So I really appreciate those comments, Amy. I'm not sure if you all can see the Q&A box either. So I can go ahead and read out one of the questions that just came in, if that's OK. Um, this is from an anonymous attendee. And they've asked, how do you get people to show up, people who are not part of a system like the VA? Yeah, that, that's, a great, that's a great question. So um, we, so w I think, you know, part of our sort of quick start guide is we have this like planning tool and part of it is identifying community partners because, you know, um, it is, is to, to work with us. And so what that means is we want to have similar overlapping missions of what we want to do. We want to partner together. And so um, through our contacts and through their contacts and through uh, maybe, you know, social media and flyers and, and sort of sharing, we, um, we develop, um, uh, we develop a following at some point. And so what we really start with is a starter group. And so that can be anyone, friends, uh, staff members, fellows in the organization, because you really want to have a few people there um, when new people take the you know take the chance to join and arrive um, and so um, you sort of start with this starter group um, the starter social uh, you partner with local organizations and you build and so uh, it, it, we sort of have this um, uh, this procedure to go about doing that um, but uh, I'd say it, you know it took us time to figure it out <laughs> We also have the benefit of, you know, there's this theme of military service that brings a lot of people together at these coffee socials. But for folks who want to do something like this out in the community, one thing that helped us, even with having that bond of um, veteran identity, we do a lot of crowdsourcing. You know, we want this to be tailored to the people who will be attending. So really getting a sense of, um, who are the people in the community that you're trying to attract and finding ways to kind of crowdsource and pull people as far as what are the things that you think would bring you out? And that's kind of how we actually launched Voices. We found that there were things people were looking for even beyond coffee socials. Um, so, you know, we had a bowling league that started up. You know, we have these various rec leagues. Um, people thought of different things outside of coffee socials that they would be attracted to. So I think just getting feedback would be a great way to start. Another aspect too is family members. Um, we've, especially during throughout the pandemic, we've, I've gotten a lot, I fielded a lot of phone calls from spouses, uh, children and children of veterans that you know happen to see a poster in the in the grocery store or on social media or online and or they heard about it through a caregiver support network of some some level and they're the ones bringing their vet their veteran to the first coffee social and start start that initial step for people showing up and we also do a lot of uh, friendly inviting. So we partnered with our suicide prevention team that answer calls from, or that receive uh, calls from that came in from the veteran crisis line. And, you know, we call them as peer sport, you know, peer specialists. However, through that work, we invite them say, hey, I'll be at the coffee on Thursday at 10 a.m. Will you meet me there? And I provide that kind of warm handoff in the moment of meeting them there and then introducing them to person A and B. Well, it does, I think we may be out of questions. So, um... What I do want to, as I want to, I want to thank. Sir, I certainly want to thank everyone uh, for attending, and um, feel free to, um, you know, reach out with on uh, some of those emails, uh, or if you have questions about the Quick Start Guide, um, or uh, you know, and uh, you know, I just, you know, thank you all for your interest, and, and glad we could be a part of this. Thank you again so much, Jay, Rachel, and Jessica. Um, this was a wonderful presentation. 
Uh, just to kind of communicate to everybody else who's here, there is one more uh, breakout session. Um, so please go ahead on to the conference uh, registrant site and choose the one you want. Um, and then after that, this evening uh, from 7 to 8.30 Eastern time, um, 6 to 7.30 Central time, uh, we are going to be having our Global Peer Support Celebration Day and award ceremony event. So I hope to see you all there. Um, and if not, happy Peer Supporter Day and thank you for attending our conference. Thank you for having thank us. You. Yeah, thank you. Bye everyone. Thanks. Thanks.